I suck at landscaping, so I force myself to learn and teach the subject. Let's get into it. Here's the story. When I started Blender almost four years ago, learning different subjects, landscaping wasn't really something I cared about, since it's not really used in product animation. Like, if I made a list of the 10 most important subjects to learn Blender, right? Landscaping, number 11, not even on the list. I saw no problem with just adding an image texture on a plane with dirt, gravel, or something else. Who cares about the background? The product, it's the product that's the main focus, right? Well, yeah. But as I began to make all kinds of animations, I realized that this could not go on. And since geometry nodes came into play, the game changed. And tell me, would you really take advice to somebody who made this? Yeah. Let's change that. This time I will teach you the most useful things I learned in this journey and show you how I use them to make this environment. But we need to start with the first and also most boring part. Finding reference pictures. Use Google Images to find something you want to make, like a beach, cliff, city, it doesn't really matter. I chose a forest location with some cliffs, a river and some mountains. I added some objects and used the sculpt mode to make some detail. But detail mesh, it's not enough. I needed some high quality materials, so the next thing I surprisingly learned was using vertex paint to combine materials. Vertex paint allows you to make a kind of color map and combine two materials. I used this technique to make a road in my field. Here's how. I selected my plane, switched to vertex paint, and draw the road. Then it's just really a mix between two materials like I did in this video. I made a material with two materials plugged into a mix shader and added a color attribute node, selected my drawing and plugged it into the factor. You could also do it with texture paint. The thing about texture painting is you also need to UV unwrap the plane. And let's just say the vertex count was too high for my computer to handle. So here's a rule of thumb. Use vertex painting whenever you have too many vertices. I told you you were next. Then it just get me. So who's next? Using geometry nodes to make layers. Take a look at this picture. This was taken outside of my apartment building. Can you tell me why this looks so realistic? I can even give you some seconds to think about the answer. Got it? It's not just pure grass. There are all kinds of things like leaves, branches, dirt places and plants. Basically, the real world has a lot of detail. And it's not even about that most 3D project doesn't have that kind of detail. It's more about we are used to seeing all this high level detail every day. So our standards for what is looking realistic and what is not is really high. And that's why I think this layer system is really important for photorealism. So make this geometry node set up to scatter objects. Connect the distribute points on face node to an instance on points node. Also remember to add a joint geometry node for later. Use a align Euler to vector to apply the normals of the plane to the scattered object. Add a random value node to a noise and a color ramp. You can also connect the random value node to the vector node, but it's optional, it doesn't really change so much. Just take your collection, select all the three boxes, and there you have it. I mostly use this to scatter some plants along the river and some trees in the background. Here comes the magic part. Make a copy of the entire geometry node setup and connect it to our earlier joint geometry node. And now it's as simple as taking a new collection in and plugging it into the copied version. And now other objects are scattered above the first objects. So you can basically do this process as many times as you want. 
but I'm sure that at some point your computer will most likely beg you to put it out of its misery if you do this 20 to 100 times. So also be aware that you don't overdo this. Here's a quick note. If the assets doesn't align on the plane correctly, check the original asset and make sure the origin is in the center of the geometry. But this is hands down the most coolest thing about this process. If you make a vertex group and connect it to the geometry setup, you can just literally use weight paint to paint where you want the assets to appear. Hey, where did you get the assets from, man? Oh, of course. If you visit this video from Covingsworth, there is a link to a forest library you can download. It used to be free, but it's now changed to $1, which is understandable. It's good assets. But you can also find assets on BlenderKit, Megascan, or you can also make them yourself if you have the time. No, we haven't. Yeah, who am I kidding? I don't feel I have enough hours through the day either. But we need to work with hours we got. So here's a recap of my environment tips. Use reference photos, use vertex paint to blend materials together, and use geometry nodes to scatter objects. And these small things might not seem important when they are separate, but together they created this.